Hi all, Luke Butterfield here with Gaming Graded. Let's talk video game guides. Chances are, if you have ever played a video game, you have gotten stuck. And in your desire to, you know, play the game, you probably have looked up a video game guide. Back in the day, video game guides used to look like this. This honking strategy guide for Skyrim. It's filled with pictures, charts, walkthroughs for every single quest. You could kill somebody with this sucker. But as we have entered the internet age, strategy guide makers like Prima and Brady are no longer in business, but they should be fine, right? We're on the internet. Everything is very usable and easy to find. Surely in the modern age, we have strategy guides that are intuitive and easy to use, right? Modern video game guides suck. We're going to talk about this. In this video, we're going to cover three different types of strategy guides. If I had to boil my problems down with these guides, it would be this. Poor usability in order to collect as much ad revenue as possible. Low effort and bad writing. And guides that are not succinct and have UI bloat. So... Let's jump in. Video game websites. So in order to understand why game website strategy guides are bad, we first have to understand SEO. SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. If a website has good SEO, they will appear higher on the Google search results. So if you're a website like IGN, you want to be at the top because then people will click on your stuff and you can sell ads and make money easier. The whole goal with SEO is to get as much traffic as possible in a somewhat organic way. This is why you see a lot of websites switching to game guides, because if you have an article for every single game in existence on your website, there's a greater chance your website is gonna show up in searches more often. If you are an IGN or a GameSpot, you want your site to appear near the top because then you can get better ad deals and you can get more people to view those ads. The entire business model is ad driven. Think about it like this. You own a restaurant along the highway. You make your money by getting butts in seats and getting people to order food. With this, you may put up a highway sign in order to advertise so people come to your restaurant. These game guides are your highway signs as they are an excuse for people to click on your video game website. This is also the reason that whenever a new game releases, you see a bunch of buzzworthy game headlines like the top 10 things to know before you start Boulder's Gate 3. Online recipes are somewhat similar. It's why you have to read about somebody's dead mother before you can get their feta pasta recipe. Websites want more content to keep you engaged for longer. So pretty much every video game website is now switching to wikis and walkthroughs in order to farm engagement. I mean, Kotaku recently announced that they were gonna be doing more wiki content because site traffic was down. So you have a situation where the internet is filled with strategy guides embedded in wikis on these websites websites. The problem is most of these guides are awful. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to call out IGN specifically because they're the biggest gaming website and I don't feel bad about making fun of them. Also, keep in mind when I'm talking about these video game guides, I'm accessing them on mobile because I'm not a freaking NASA scientist. I'm not going to have my laptop open while I play a game. So let's start by just doing a walkthrough of one of IGN's walkthroughs. The first thing I immediately notice as I start scrolling down the screen is the actual walkthrough text is about an inch big. This is because they have these large banner ads going on for Indiana Jones. So obviously we're going to click away from that. As we go through the site, you have the guide that scrolls by, but they also do a couple of puzzling things here with their strategy guide. The first is they have these surveys just in embedded throughout their strategy guide. I assume this is to farm engagement on their website in some fashion. Probably some metric they use when they sell ads. It just wastes space. There's also a ton of stuff on this page about signing in to use their tracker. I guess the idea here is you sign into your IGN account and as you play a game in their walkthrough, you can click off things that you've collected. It's not a bad idea in practice. I just can't imagine ever wanting an IGN account. This also becomes a usability problem because if you click on a tracker accidentally as you're scrolling through their guide, it'll take you to a separate login page and you lose your spot. 
Another obvious problem here is that IGN just doesn't waste their screen space with ads, but they also promote their own tweets and their IGN deals section. Wow, yeah, so they promote IGN deals, and essentially IGN deals is they'll throw some gamer merchandise in front of you with an affiliate link, and they can make money if you click on that link and buy something. Kind of icky, but it's a business. I'm more offended that it takes up the space of the walkthrough I'm trying to read. One last thing about the ads on IGN's website, if you put your phone into sleep mode, like if it falls asleep while you're playing a game and you try to reopen it, the guide will error out. It's very frustrating when you're going through a long guide and you're just constantly losing your spot every time you return to the guide. All of this happens because the page is so overloaded with interactivity and ads that doesn't need to be there. Let's talk about writing style and usability next. Let's take a look at IGN's Ocarina of Time guide. This guide uses something that I hate, and that is using videos in place of screenshots. In the old strategy guide days, you would be taken through a dungeon step by step with a screenshot showing you what to do every step of the way. Instead, IGN wants you to watch a video on their archaic, in-house video player. This is a problem with IGN, but also a lot of sites. They want to make video game guides and be in the guides business, but they don't want to walk you through step-by-step step, succinctly with screenshots. They do this because it takes effort and it's easier just to record a quick video and throw it up so that you can have your article do well on Google's algorithm. And IGN's video player specifically is terrible and it's always been terrible. They do this because they don't want you going out into YouTube. They want you to stay on site with their video player so they can make the maximum amount of money. As a company, it's their prerogative to do that, but ultimately it leads to a worse product for the consumer. Guide writing is an art. It needs to be succinct and direct so the player knows what they need to do next in any given situation. So with this in mind, let's take a look at writing style. Let's take a look at some of the writing that exists in the Ocarina of Time IGN strategy guide. After grabbing the compass and after you leave the room, you will see that scultillas on the ceiling of the chamber are blocking the paths down to the web at the ground level. Destroy one or more of the scultillas and then jump down onto the web, which will cause it to stretch and break. Be careful, though, as you can miss, and the fall can cause two hearts of damage. Once you have broken through, you will be on floor B1. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'd argue the writing style here is just completely wrong. You have these long run-on sentences where the player can easily get confused. Without any accompanying images, it's impossible to parse what IGN is trying to convey in these long sentences. The player just gets lost. This isn't me saying I can't read, but instead saying that this guide could have been written far more concise. Shoot, it should have been bulleted. That would convey the information so much better. And you have this problem throughout IGN's Ocarina of Time strategy guide. It's a lot of long run-on sentences that are impossible to parse. And then instead of including screenshots to aid in clarity, they have these videos baked into their slow video player. And guess what? You're getting an ad every time you click on one of those videos. It's unusable. And this is my problem with modern game websites and their strategy guides. Everyone is chasing this SEO bag to the point where their products their strategy guides are just unusable. These guides exist to collect SEO with as a minimal effort as possible. Phantom Wikis. While I'm complaining about game guides, I think it would be a mistake to not call out Fandom Wikis. For those of you who may not know Fandom, Fandom is a for-profit website that hosts a bunch of video game wikis. They're home to a bunch of video game walkthroughs and content. A lot of their articles are like if there's an item in a specific game, it'll have a fandom wiki page explaining what it is. Fandom is massive and they are owned by a private equity firm, TPG. Fandom underneath TPG is so big, they've actually bought up large gaming websites like Giant Bomb, GameStop, Metacritic, etc. I think about fandom like this. It's kind of like YouTube where fan bases can go in and they can create their own personalized wiki using their tools. They can use the fandom platform to easily publish guides for their favorite games.
at fandom's peak every single game community was on this website and it was terrible you see fandom is for profit and because they are a for-profit company they need to grow every quarter you saw this in fandom by them pumping in as many ads as possible onto the website every opportunity for advertising they could find they took it and it got to a point where a lot of these wikis were unusable on mobile because there was constantly ads opening and closing as you scrolled through the page your browser would crash it was so bad i spent a lot of time complaining about ign but fandom at its peak was a lot worse it got so bad in fact that communities for games like terraria and elden ring and the other souls games decided to move off of the site and make their own wikis because fandom was unusable. On top of this, the wikis were also pretty easy to vandalize, so there was just incorrect information out there. I think about fandom like this. Take something like Wikipedia, remove every single defense it has against poor quality articles, fill the site with ads, and you have a site that is profitable, incorrect garbage. In my mind, fandom at its peak represents the worst parts of modern video game guides. It was incorrect, poorly written and unusable because of the amount of ads that were all over the site. In researching this video, I was actually surprised to learn that their mobile site has gotten just a little bit better. I mean, it's still kind of bad, but it's nowhere near as bad as it was at its peak. So maybe they're listening to feedback and dialing the ads back a little bit. It just sucks. It took a bunch of high profile games leaving before the owners decided to make their site usable. Ultimately, fandom is symbolic for the problems that are facing modern video game guides. YouTubers. Let's talk about a form of game guides that that are particularly useless, YouTuber guides. As a creator myself, believe me when I tell you, YouTubers are cringe. Everybody's trying to build a brand. Everybody wants to do it full time because it's their passion. And you have a lot of people that are out here trying to win everybody else's attention. So how does this play into game guides? Well, let's go back to my original definition. Game guides should be succinct and direct. They should explain what you need to know quickly. This is a problem because YouTube as a platform encourages you to develop long form content. YouTube wants you to make long form content so that you can build an audience. This is not conducive to useful game guides. So what ends up happening is you have this guy that presents his YouTube video as like a quick guide on how to do something and then the video is like eight minutes long. I would argue in some way this is just as bad as the stuff that IGN and Fandom do. You're presenting a low quality guide in order to build an audience. You're trying to make money by presenting a guide that is of a lesser quality. My favorite things in these videos are when they obviously don't know where to go, so they just kind of awkwardly meander for an extended amount of time. It's not great. Look, at the end of the day, it's not quite as egregious as some of the big sites because it is just people wanting to chase their passions but it sucks that in the modern video game age on the internet we have to sift through thousands of useless videos of a guy that can't succinctly tell you how to do something in a game conclusion i am so tired of being advertised to constantly in the age of the internet where advertising isn't just tv commercials these marketing blitzes are inescapable in a nutshell, video game guides have become so highly monetized in the internet era that they are frankly unusable in large parts of the internet. Everyone is rushing to hit the Google algorithm perfectly so they can appear two spots higher than their competitor website and they can maximize profits off of some guide that teaches you how to collect eggs. I'm so tired of this, in fact, that when I saw this article about Google changing their algorithm and screwing over a bunch of game websites, part of me thought, good. I mean, look, I don't want these sites to suffer. I don't want people to lose their jobs, but also I'm kind of tired of a system that's incentivized this rat race for so long. Why should I, as a consumer, care about your bottom line? Specifically, when I, as someone who comes to your site, to look at a guide gets an infinitely worse experience just because you wanna appear higher on the Google search results. I also wanna highlight again, game guide writing is an art and people are doing it so badly. Nobody knows how to write guides anymore. 
you have these long drawn out passages that don't get to the point and the reader gets easily lost because it's not succinct you have just thousands of words of just useless text sitting out there on these game guides so what's the solution how can we end on a positive note just like before i want to praise the guys that are out there making minute to two minute youtube videos something that's quick succinct and easy to follow you guys aren't doing this to raise your profile you're doing it because you care about the game and you should be praised we all should praise these people I also want to shout out fan sites. I know for Final Fantasy in particular, there's a couple of fan sites that are awesome and, and really well laid out without that much advertising throughout. Adding to this, I want to shout out the site Power Picks. It's one of my favorite trophy guide websites, and they specifically do a great job of making short, brief video game guides that do not spoil you on the story you're about to experience. Ultimately, I think it's just really unfortunate that internet algorithms reward these low quality guides when there are so many high quality fan sites and resources that are out there. So video game guides, I'm feeling a uh, F on this one. Get it together. Remember, this channel is a collection of bad opinions. Love what you saw, hate what you saw, drop a comment down below. Let's discuss. Remember to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Videos are always coming.